So now your triceps are a very complex muscle. This is our humerus and this is our scapula. Okay. This humerus moves around the scapula like this, like this. Okay. Now the problem with triceps is that not all the heads of triceps start from the same point and not all of them end on the same point. This makes it a bit difficult to train all the heads of the triceps. Okay. Now this is our human skeleton. When we see the humerus, this is the humerus. Now we add some muscles. Here we will find the triceps. Wow, beautiful. Look, triceps. Now this is the lateral head of the triceps. Lateral means away from the body. This is the a long head of the tricep because long because it's starting from the scapula and ending on the humerus. You see this thing, this one small thing, this is the medial head of the triceps. Okay. Now this is what gives the horseshoe shape to the tricep. So this is the scapula. The scapula. Now the long head starts from just below the glenoid cavity. Okay, if I remove this humerus, you see this is the glenoid cavity or the glenoid fossa. And here we have the triceps just below the glenoid cavity. Now something that is just below the glenoid cavity should be called inferior to the glenoid cavity and also called as the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula. Got it? Why the infraglenoid? Because this is the glenoid cavity. This is superior. This is inferior. This is the infraglenoid cavity. Now Ravi Kunta, nice seeing you today. Where does the bicep uh, long head start? Bicep starts from I'm confused between supraglenoid and infraglenoid. Okay, so the bicep starts from the supraglenoid cavity and the triceps start from the infraglenoid tubercle. Okay, this is the long head of bicep. This is this long head of tricep. Now, when we are like this, we do our bicep curl. Why? Because it's coming from above. It's coming from the supraglenoid tubercle. So, to make it long, we pull it in the inferior direction. Now, a tricep starts from the infraglenoid tubercle. Thus, to stretch the tricep, we take our tricep overhead. So, this makes it very good for your triceps. So, that's how you remember where the long heads of the tricep start from. To get your tricep in the lengthened position, you should always have your hand above your head. Okay. Goes from infraglenoid tubercle right down till the medial border of the humerus. Watch. The lateral head goes to the medial border of the humerus. And then inserts into something which is known as the olecranon fossa. Okay. Now we have our elbow joint, which we have already discussed. Now we know that our elbow joint is made up of two things. It's made up of the humerus and it's made up of the ulna. Okay. So this is the ulna. This is the head of the ulna. Now what happens is this is our humerus. Now here we have a fossa. Okay, now here we attach our alna. This is our alna. Okay. So this is called as the elbow joint. So my drawing is not that great, but my science is. So just try to understand. This is the humerus. This is the alna, and this is the elbow joint. Now this head of the alna, this head of the alna, which joins the humerus, is called as the olecranon process. What is it called? Varikunta, repeat with me. What is it called? Olecranon process. Olecranon process. Okay. Now, process is something that is a head or it has some pointy end. Okay. Now, a process always joins into something that is a cavity or is a fossa. So, the same place on the humerus will be called as, as the olecranon fossa. Okay. So, our olecranon uh tubercle or olecranon uh what was it called head is joins into the olecranon fossa okay so this is the elbow joint now our triceps what happens is our triceps here we have the scapula we have the scapula right here okay now this is the uh, infraglenoid tubercle our triceps start from here they run along the medial border of the humerus run along run along and then they come down here till the olecranon process okay right here and they attach on the olecranon fossa or the olecranon process. That is why we say that we should extend our elbows to train our triceps. Even though our triceps are starting here, they come down till here. And that's why they have the function of elbow extension.
is a biarticular muscle and your bicep is a triarticular muscle see how uh, word boggling this is our bicep is a triarticular but our bi- tricep is a biarticular process muscle okay so why biarticular triarticular because bicep passes through three joints triarticular tricep passes through two joints biarticular last time we dis- uh, discussed how bicep is triarticular it crosses the shoulder joint it crosses the elbow joint and it crosses the radio ulnar joint okay our tricep is a biarticular muscle because it crosses the shoulder joint and the elbow joint it does not cross the radius why because elbow joint is only made up of the humerus and the ulna okay any right so what the basis of this is a medial head why is it in the lateral direction is it actually in the lateral direction no so our long head starts first then our lateral head is also a big muscle which starts from the humerus and ends on the humerus and radius as well, ulna as well but our medial head lies below these two muscles okay it is not a separate head two heads we have check my video we have the long head we have the lateral head both of these attach on the olecranon process and now we have the medial head which is below both of these like this this also attaches on the olecranon process the triceps have same insertions but they have different origins right so this is a long head again long head now this is a lateral head which starts from the medial border of the humerus in the medial border of the humerus and then it ends same place olecranon process olecranon fossa okay you can see you can very clearly see the olecranon process and the olecranon fossa in this one okay very clearly visible to all of you yeah okay so now we have the medial head which is right below both of these look beautiful this is beautiful okay this is the long head lateral head this is the long head and this is the medial head right below both of these you see the tricep extension or the elbow extension what we traditionally feel we think that this is extension this this is shoulder extension this is not elbow extension this is elbow flexion and then we go down this is extension that's it this is neutral position anatomical position this is flexion this is extension this is not extension this is shoulder extension not the elbow extension you look the elbow it's always straight when it goes behind you can't bend the elbow behind that is why this is the maximum extended position of the elbow and elbow extension is only against resistance you can't extend the elbow because it starts at the anatomical position as completely extended okay so that was all about the medial head this is the lateral head which starts from the medial border of the humerus ends on the ulna ends on the olecranon process basic now we watch motions <laughs> look this is also for elbow extension now ideally if i would have put something here as a weight then it would have helped me extend my elbow okay more and use my muscles more right now we have one more muscle that is not the part of a tricep but last time i told you guys that there is another elbow extensor what is this muscle those who attended last lecture vari kunta what muscle except the tricep helps in elbow extension the wrist muscles no those are for wrist extension not elbow extension so this muscle is the anconius okay check this out look this very 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 tiny tiny small muscle yeah look got it 1 minute 30 seconds to discuss antagonist and agonist muscles so basically which muscle is getting used when i do the bicep curl my bicep is being used so bicep is the agonist muscle now when i flex my biceps you see my triceps are getting extended they're getting stretched now there's a reflex action what happens when you flex your biceps your triceps automatically get relaxed so as to not prevent the resistance from your triceps while stretching okay your triceps is getting stretched but it also gets relaxed so that your bicep does not face much resistance now you won't feel it don't try to feel it now you'll feel it slightly but when you're doing exercises you'll actually feel it and your bicep curls your triceps get relaxed so the muscle i'm using is agonist the muscle that is getting relaxed is antagonist 